Hello everyone, today we're going to take a quick look at Searching, directed by Anish Chiganti. Searching stars John Cho as David Kim and Michelle Law as his daughter Margot, who have not had the best relationship ever since tragedy struck their family several years prior. One day, Margot mysteriously goes missing, and as David frantically tries to find her, he soon comes to the realization that he really doesn't know his own daughter at all. And so he starts digging through Margot's laptop to find out more about who she is, so he can hopefully find out what the hell happened to her. So the best way I can describe searching is, it's a lot like Unfriended, if Unfriended was a good movie. Much like Unfriended, the entire film takes place on various computer screens, which caught me off guard at first, because the very first shot, if you can call it that, is a Windows XP desktop. It starts with a flashback. And my first thought was, oh shit, the projector crashed again. Wait. Account creation? What's going on? Oh, okay, it's one of those movies. All right. And it really confused people in the theater when John Cho first showed up in the webcam and one of the people behind me was like, hey, he's a famous actor. I just didn't have the heart to tell her. I started to and I'm like, wait, no, I want to see how long it takes. This kind of movie can throw you off if you're not expecting it. And what do we call this kind of movie anyway? It's, it's not really found footage because we're not finding it after the fact. We're still watching it happen as it happens, but there's screen cap cinema. I don't know. There's got to be a better name for it. But anyway, I went into this movie fully expecting it to suck after reading a little plot summary on IMDb, which states David is trying to find his daughter by going through the one place that no one else looked, her laptop. And my first thought was, the police didn't check her laptop? Why would they not do that? Oh my god, this movie is going to be stupid, isn't it? Forget that description, it's very misleading. Just ignore it. It's much better than that would lead you to believe. In fact, I really ended up liking this one. This was a very clever way of telling this story. I don't know that I would call it inventive, since it's basically just building on what Unfriended already did a few years ago, but it took what Unfriended did and did it right. And by that I mean I actually gave a shit about these characters. I actually wanted David to find Margot, preferably alive. Though I was prepared for the possibility that that may not happen. I enjoyed this story of a father's search for his daughter in more ways than one, and it's amazing what you can learn about someone from social media. We're basically following this father's journey into his daughter's mind and watching as he slowly comes to the realization that he really does not know his daughter in the slightest. They have grown so far apart over the years that they may as well be strangers. And the story does have quite a few twists, some of which I saw coming, but there were one or two that surprised me. Cho's performance is excellent, Law is great as well, as is Deborah Messing, who plays a police detective. And it's amazing what great work they can do, considering they basically have to act in front of a webcam. But what really stuck out at me are some of the moments where you don't see any of the actors at all. Without giving too much away, there is a bit in the opening flashback montage where the movie takes you on this emotional ride through optimism and then uncertainty and then despair and then I'm not crying, you're crying. And it does all of this using just a calendar. That's it, a calendar. And I just thought that was brilliant. There is a bit of cheating here and there because when you're working with a limited medium like this, you will inevitably run into a wall. There are a few moments where the webcam on David's MacBook appears to be filming for no reason whatsoever, except it has to film, otherwise we can't see him. Also, and this probably won't matter to most people, but the screening I attended was in San Jose, and the movie takes place in and around San Jose. So there were a few things here and there that the locals definitely picked up on. I was surprised that they managed to get four different local news networks involved with this movie. Like the ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox affiliates are all in here. And yet there were a few things that they apparently could not get clearance for. For example, 
David's brother-in-law in this movie is a big hockey fan, and of course his favorite team is the San Jose Finns. Get it? And what I found rather surprising was they apparently could not get clearance to use the San Jose Police Department because all the cops in this movie belong to the Silicon Valley Police Department. Which, of course, is not a thing because Silicon Valley is not a city. So many people in that theater kept giggling whenever that came up, and I can't really blame them. I never thought a local police department would ever result in a rights issue, but... Apparently it can, which makes me wonder why they didn't just set the movie in a fictional city, but oh well. But a few minor nitpicks aside, this was actually pretty good. It's certainly an unusual way to tell this story, and I'm sure it's not going to jive with everyone, but the story was solid, the acting was fantastic, and I for one would say it's worth seeing. And that's all I got to say about searching. Till next time, take care.